when the virtuous leader of a clan is mysteriously assassinated. It's up to his pupils to discover the murderer and ensure the town and its people are protected from evil and corruption. Will the killer's identity be discovered? Is there collusion that conspires from within? Only time will tell as the Venoms pursue truth under the Flag of Iron. The Flag of Iron, aka the Spearman of Death, is a 1980s Shaw Brothers production directed by the great Chang Che and starring a handful of Venom's mob actors excluding Lo Mang and Sun Qian. This movie is a slight departure from some earlier Shaw Brothers iterations due to the use of the ceremonial flags being used as unconventional weapons, which may explain the absence of Lo Mang and Sun Qian since they don't typically utilize weapons in their movies. The story starts with the Honorable Iron Flag Clan, which is headed by a respectable leader who likes to keep the town free from crime and corruption. Iron Panther Lo, played by Philip Kwok, and Yoon, played by Chang Xiang, are two of the top brothers when we meet them from busting up a prostitution ring that's run by a rival gang, the Eagles Clan. The Eagles are the Iron Flag's sworn enemies, and their recent behavior suggests that a gang war is coming soon. After busting up their operation, the Iron Flag leaders are surprised when they receive an invitation to join the Eagles for a peace treaty over dinner. They all suspect it's a trap, and Chow, played by Lu Feng, and the eldest brother of the Iron Flag, reveals that he's hired an ace in the hole who goes by the name of Spearman who will watch their backs if something goes wrong. Guess what? Something goes wrong, and all hell breaks loose in the restaurant. The unarmed Iron Flag leaders are surrounded by dozens of Eagle Clan's fighters, but Spearman arrives just in time to balance the odds. Towards the end of the fight, someone attacks the Iron Flag leader from behind, leaving both he and the Eagle Clan leaders all dead, with a few remaining Eagles left to escape. Brother Chow is shadily elected to be the new Iron Flag leader, while Brother Lo is hung out to dry as someone must take the blame for all the dead bodies. Lo is convinced to leave town for about a year until things quiet down. Brother Chow promises to send Lo money so that he doesn't go broke during his exile. Brother Lo moves to another town and becomes a waiter slash busboy. With little to no money left, he struggles with his room and board. That's when Yoon shows up and announces that he has been kicked out of the Iron Flag and that Brother Chow has now assumed control of the gambling and prostitution that was once controlled by the Eagle Clan. Chow has also taken in the surviving Eagle Clan members and has not sent Brother Lo a single penny. This begins to arouse suspicion between the two exiles regarding the demise of their slain master and the motivations of Brother Chow. What happens next is someone mysteriously sends a group of 10 killers to wipe out Brother Lo. Seems they wish to silence him before he gets too suspicious. Those killers are... The Axeman. The fortune teller, the killer butcher, the accountant, the dangerous kid, and the four sickles, which leads the last killer, if you haven't figured it out yet, the spearman. But there's one problem. It seems the spearman has a code of ethics and doesn't believe in killing bad men. And since he determines that Brother Lowe is not a bad man and is actually the victim in this whole thing, he decides to assist Lowe and Yoon against a true villain in this story the one who secretly conspired to kill the Iron Flag leader and eliminate Lo, Brother Chow. What happens next is a tangle web of twists and turns which lead to the eventual showdown between former clansmen with a little spearman thrown in for good measure. Flag of Iron is a variable mix of martial arts mastery, mystery, and mayhem. Though not one of my favorite Venom flicks, it's still an entertaining watch, so let's talk about it. The pros. In keeping with true Shaw tradition, Flag of Iron does a good job of creating colorful characters that differentiate enough from one another to maintain the viewer's interest. The martial arts choreography, when it happens, is quite good and I thoroughly enjoyed the variability of the 10 killers. The usage of a flag as a weapon was an interesting choice. It never dawned on me that it could be utilized in such a fashion and I thought that was pretty creative. The cons. There are moments where the dialogue is quite cheesy, even for an 80s kung fu flick. 
You can tell that Chang Che might not be happy with the script in this film, as he attempts to fix everything wrong here in his immediate follow-up, Mask Avengers, and I definitely recommend you check that one out. The story drags on in certain spots, particularly during scenes in the gambling house and the villa where Brother Lo gets captured. Speaking of the villa, Brother Chow sets a trap for Lo and had him in the leather net that cut into his skin as the bands dried. He literally had him captured. Why not just kill him then and be done with it? This seems very James Bond-esque where the villains fail to eliminate the captured 007. The fight scenes between Brother Lo and 9 of the 10 killers, while great, were a bit short. I found myself wanting more. This movie lacks a certain depth of character. I felt Philip Kwok was just going through the motions and the movie lacks some of the charisma and heart that Lo Mang brings. Lastly, the introduction of the female sex worker didn't make sense. Originally, she was the woman being shanghaied in the beginning of the film. Later, she's working in the brothel and is a love interest of Spearman. So was she a plant? I was confused by this character and she felt a bit forced. Overall, I think that Flag of Iron aka the Spearman of Death is a decent but not great piece of work from the Shaw Brothers Studios. In my opinion, it's in the lower echelon of their catalog and the absence of certain venoms from the film is definitely felt. So I'm going to give it 7 kicks. Well that's all for now. Tell us how you feel about Flag of Iron. Leave a comment below and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Until next time, this is the Lone Wolf signing off. Peace and out.